Okay, so this is the feedback for the Unit 103 mock exam. I'm going to review the questions which uh, quite a few people are, are getting wrong, so hopefully this should clear that up. So one of the questions was about voltmeters uh, and how they should be connected to measure the potential difference across a load in a DC circuit. So a few people are getting this wrong, so let's have a very quick look at the uh, the principles behind this. Is our DC circuit, plus minus could be a battery or power supply, there's our load. Uh, voltmeters uh, are used in parallel. They measure what we call the potential difference, the PD, across the load. So think of it as a pressure difference. Um, that's what potential difference is pretty much. Uh, so our voltmeter would be placed in parallel or across. So I like to use the word across the load. Okay. The next question uh, or area where people were going slightly off track was when we come to force and mass, particularly pulleys. So if we look at this uh, this diagram here, we have uh, the 500 kilogram mass that's connected through a four pulley system, and we need to work out uh, what force we need to basically apply in the direction shown um, in other words to lift up the 500 kilogram mass so remember on here that basically force is mass times acceleration now immediately if you see kilograms kilograms mass is measured in kilograms so that is not a force okay force is always measured in newtons okay um, when it comes to um, vertical acceleration then it's gravity so gravity has a fixed constant of 9.81 meters per second squared okay it's been pulled downwards so what quite a few people are doing here is is they're looking at the mass dividing it by four uh, and saying yeah you know that's that's going to be the answer that's and leaving the answer um obviously in kilograms so what we have to do here is firstly apply gravity so if we call the uh, if we call this a the load on this side then sorry not the load i beg your pardon the effort the load there so if we get the load and we divide that by the number of pulleys that's going to be 500 kg divided by 4 which is 125 kilograms so here at this point we're going to get 125 kg but that's a mass that's not a force what we need to do is we need to calculate the force by simply multiplying the mass by gravity so effort force is going to be 125 kg times 9.81 you can say 10 so you could run up to 10 uh, and obviously if, if we did that loosely that's going to be 1250 newtons so in an exam um, you know, look for that uh, obviously a little bit more accurate uh, a bit more accuracy with that then it's actually 1226 the actual answer is 1226 newtons if you're going to be absolutely accurate but but like i say so remember force is measured in newtons and Force is mass times acceleration. Look for the units. If the load is measured is in kg, that is not a force, that's a mass. And it even tells you there actually in the question there, look, it's their mass. So just be aware of that uh, everybody. Um, look for your units. A lot of people were just dividing, let's say, the 500 kg by 4 and 125. Um, 
and even saying 125 newtons, that's incorrect. So, take note of that. Okay, another question that people seem to be chipping up on units. 20 centimetres is 0.2 metres. Centi is a prefix. Be careful for prefixes in questions. What would be the force exerted on a conductor 20 centimetres long carrying a current of 2 amps when placed at right angles? So that's the diagram. So we've got two magnets, north south, that's given us a, uh, a flux, magnetic flux which will flow between north and south on there. Uh, and then we have a conductor at right angles, uh, 90 degrees perpendicular, which is carrying a current of magnitude 2 amps. So we've got 2 amps flowing away, so the cross there is obviously flowing away from us. Um, what will be the force on the conductor? Quite easy, so F equals BIL, that's the formula that, we're, that we need to remember. F equals BIL, so flux density B, 8 tesla, length, 0.2 meters, 20 centimeters, and I, 2 amps, multiply them all together, come out with 3.2 newtons. So there will be 3.2 newtons force going in that direction. If you remember what we said, if we change the direction of the magnetic field or the current, then the force will go in the opposite direction. This is the principles of an electric motor. Okay. Okay, so the next question is induced EMF. So in order to induce a voltage in a coil, i.e. a generator, uh, there needs to be a change in magnetic flux um, passing through that coil. The greater the level of flux change, or in other words, the faster it changes, the higher the induced voltage E. The triangle means rate of change. So when you see a triangle phi or triangle T, that means that the flux is changing from one level to another. Uh, and so is the time. So we look at the question and we can see that EMF is 150 volts, so we're given E and the current and the current is falling. We don't know what the current level is, doesn't give us that in the question, but we're wanting to work out what the flux change in the coil would be when the current uh, falls uh, to zero. Um, okay, so look at the question gather our terms, we need to rearrange the formula for flux, so the change in flux which is phi, so I've done that, so we've transposed the formula, so E times uh, the change in time. So we've got 150 volts and the flux and the, the flux is, is changed, the current sorry in the coil is falling to zero in 10 milliseconds, so in 10 milliseconds it's going uh, down to zero, all right, great change. So the answer to that is 1.5 Webers. Okay, uh, so the quicker the change, then the more induced EMF we will have, uh, and so on. Okay. So electronics now, which component is used to amplify low level signals from a passive infrared detector to higher levels that can trigger the alarm circuit? Um, and the answer to the question is a transistor. So often in electronics, so when we are sensing light, sound or temperature, um, or we need to amplify something to make it much stronger. Without the use of amplification, the signals that we're picking up are very, very, very small. Um, so we need to magnify them. So the device, the, or the, should I say the electronic component that we use is called a transistor. And the symbol for a transistor is like so. Okay. So what we have, just draw those down there like so. So that is the collector. This is the emitter. It's got the little arrow on there. And this is the base. EBC and what a transistor does basically is the volt the current sorry would come in in the collector and it will be emitted out on the emitter like so however the transistor will only operate when we get a signal on the base so if there's no voltage at all on the base then 
the transistor will not conduct it's like a switch as well it acts like a solid state switch there's no moving parts so they can switch on and off very very quickly as an amplifier if this transistor had a gain so we talk about gain here if they say had a gain of 200 then for every one that was put in on the base the transistor would emit it would amplify that base signal 200 times okay so if we were to, um, to put a very very small current in on the base that current will be magnified much 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 greater so it can be used a Darlington pair is a very very powerful transistor where what we do is, is we hook up uh, the transistors like so and what happens here is let's you've got transistor 1 transistor 2 so let's just say this transistor was a signal uh, transistor in other words it's very very small uh, and we need to lift the current up 200 times so we can see what's going on if we wanted to make that uh, that signal to switch a, a, an even greater current let's just say we put a gain on there of t transistor 2 had a gain of 10 so in other words it amplifies 10 times then the, the total gain for this circuit for a Darlington pair would be 200 times 10 so we have a huge gain of 2000 so that means for every one we put into the base on TR1 we can amplify effectively 2000 times which is huge so that's where your microphones and your audio so imagine if you're singing in an arena your 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 voice and you've got to amplify that from a huge speaker stack you know to scream out across Wembley then you're going to need to amplify that many many times um, so this is a Darlington pair these are found in boiler circuits uh, sensing circuits like temperature and oxygen sensors in flues and control circuits so many many control circuits light sensors things like that um, we use transistors uh, to amplify uh, the signal so we can process and control whatever we want to control so Darlington pair arrangement two transistors are so multiplies the gain very very powerful arrangement there and the final question of the homework which is to review um, is the power calculation and it's similar to the same mistakes that candidates are making when they're doing the pulleys question is they're not working out force they're basically treating the mass as the force that's incorrect we need to work out the force first by multiplying it by the gravity acceleration of 9.81 meters per second so in this question we need to work out the approximate power so work done is force times distance firstly work out force so that's 500 kilograms times 9.81 which is 4905 newtons 4.9 kilonewtons power is then work done over time taken um, so that obviously then we need to work out the work done first so force times distance so we've got 4.9 kilonewtons times 50 meters gives us 245,250 joules um, and then we divide the joules we're going to use those amount of joules in 90 seconds means the power is going to be 2.73 kilowatts it's actually 2725 watts but rounded up is 2.73 kilowatts so yeah so just uh, be aware everybody uh, force is mass times gravity okay any uh, questions or things you don't understand, drop me a message and I'll get back to you when I can. Thank you.